Tu Xiaoning brought Ji Yuheng home and told her parents that they were going to get their marriage certificate the next day. Her parents were quite surprised, as they hadn't even heard about them dating, and now, all of a sudden, they were getting married. Tu Xiaoning explained that Ji Yuheng was her high school classmate and that she had secretly liked him since then. So, when they met again during a matchmaking session, she didn't want to let him go and decided to just go ahead and get married. Ji Yuheng played along, reassuring her parents, uncle, auntie, don't worry. Xiaoning and I have a strong emotional foundation. In the end, seeing that their daughter had made up her mind, her parents happily agreed to the marriage. The next day, after Tu Xiaoning finished reporting her work to Rao Jing, she requested and was granted a three-hour personal leave. As soon as the time came, she hurriedly left the office. Ji Yuheng was already waiting for her in the car downstairs. As they rushed to the civil affairs office to register their marriage, they realized they hadn't prepared any photos. So, the two of them quickly ran to a nearby photo studio to get their pictures taken. However, by the time they returned with the photos, the registration office staff had already finished for the day, leaving them disappointed as they had to return empty-handed. Tu Xiaoning's parents invited relatives and friends to their home to celebrate their marriage registration. When the couple returned home, they were caught off guard by the lively scene filled with relatives. To avoid disappointing her mother, they tacitly agreed to keep the fact that they hadn't actually registered yet a secret. Ji Yuheng, showing his quick wit and thoughtfulness, quickly adapted to the joyful atmosphere and seamlessly blended into the celebration. The two of them went to Tu Xiaoning's room where Ji Yuheng noticed the large teddy bear he had exchanged at the matchmaking agency, sitting by Tu Xiaoning's pillow. Seeing it brought a sweet feeling to his heart. They then agreed to go to the civil affairs office next Wednesday to get their marriage certificate. Ji Yuheng won the affection and approval of Tu Xiaoning's parents and received a large red envelope from them as a symbol of their blessings. Tu's father even took him aside to share some husbandly advice saying that the best way to treat a wife can be summed up in one word, pamper. Meanwhile, Tu's mother couldn't stop praising Ji Yuheng, remarking that Tu Xiaoning had excellent taste in choosing a husband, just as good as her own. Tu Xiaoning expressed her gratitude to Ji Yuheng, feeling deeply comforted by how seamlessly he had supported her in dealing with her parents. She admitted that she hadn't fully adjusted to the changes in her new role yet. Ji Yuheng understanding her feelings, thoughtfully reassured her that he understood and would leave to give her enough space and time. He quietly watched as Tu Xiaoning went upstairs, only turning to leave once he saw the light in her room turn on, his heart filled with hope and anticipation for their future. After finishing a busy day, Ji Yuheng couldn't help but open his notebook and look at the marriage certificate photo he had taken with Tu Xiaoning. He then carefully placed it into his wallet. Meanwhile, Tu Xiaoning was selecting outfits to go meet a client at Rao Jing's request. The dinner she had originally planned with Ji Yuheng had to be cancelled because of this. When Ji Yuheng encountered Tu Xiaoning and Rao Jing in the elevator, all dressed up for the meeting, he immediately texted her, so when you said you had to work late, you meant going to accompany a client, hi. Tu Xiaoning replied, I'm just an employee, I have to follow the boss's orders, don't I? Ji Yuheng then addressed Rao Jing, who was busy requesting leniency from Director Yao, saying, Manager Rao, just because something isn't illegal doesn't mean it's in line with the rules. Rao Jing shot back, Mr. Ji, are you warning me? Ji Yuheng calmly replied, just a friendly reminder. Tu Xiaoning stood at the entrance, waiting for Rao Jing to drive over when Ji Yuheng walked up and draped his jacket over her shoulders. He gently asked if she truly wanted to go to the dinner with the client, offering to explain the situation to Rao Jing if she didn't want to go. Tu Xiaoning saw it as a valuable opportunity to challenge herself and decided to accompany Rao Jing. She then asked him, why did you talk to Sister Jing like that earlier? He replied, because she ruined our first dinner together. As soon as she saw Rao Jing's car approaching, Tu Xiaoning quickly ran off to join her. At the dinner with General Manager Qian, Tu Xiaoning skillfully steered the conversation using the detailed preparation she had done beforehand. Her strong professional acumen shone through, impressing General Manager Qian, who expressed great appreciation for her efforts. 
Ji Yuhang was having tea with his teacher when his phone caught his attention several times. The teacher asked, Yuhang, you never look at your phone when you're with me. Is something going on today? Ji Yuhang replied, it seems nothing escapes your notice. She's out dining with a client, and I'm quite worried. The teacher then inquired, really? When did you get a girlfriend? Ji Yuhang responded, recently. When the opportunity arises, I'll bring her to meet you. After the dinner, both Rao Jing and Tu Xiaoning showed signs of being drunk. In the restroom, Rao Jing shared some career wisdom with Tu Xiaoning, while Tu Xiaoning confidently claimed her exceptional alcohol tolerance. Nevertheless, she still needed Rao Jing's support to leave. Faced with the difficulty of not being able to get a ride hailing service, Ji Yuhang appeared just in time. Before Rao Jing could respond, Tu Xiaoning, already quite tipsy, had gotten into the car. Rao Jing took the passenger seat, and Ji Yuhang remarked, she seems to have had quite a bit to drink. Rao Jing confirmed, yes, she has drunk quite a lot. Ji Yuhang then commented, it seems those rumors about your department might be true. Rao Jing responded, Mr. Ji, don't believe those rumors. I have my principles in how I do things. Ji Yuhang said, that's good to hear. In the back seat, Tu Xiaoning mumbled drunkenly as she drifted in and out of sleep. When Ji Yuhang was dropping Tu Xiaoning off at her home, she accidentally left her keys in the car. Ji Yuhang, with no other option, knocked on the door but received no response. He called Tu Xiaoning's mother and learned that her parents had gone back to their hometown for a vacation. Without hesitation, Ji Yuhang decided to take Tu Xiaoning back to his place. He placed Tu Xiaoning on the sofa, and she instinctively pulled him closer, saying, You're really good looking. You completely match my aesthetic. If you weren't so handsome, I wouldn't have agreed to marry you so quickly. Ji Yuhang felt a surge of impulse to kiss her, but ultimately, reason prevailed over emotion. He chose instead to quietly protect and be there for her. Tu Xiaoning awake slowly realized she was in Ji Yuhang's home, where everything felt both strange and familiar. On the table, breakfast and the keys were waiting for her. A note from Ji Yuhang read, Last night, your parents came back from the countryside and had your daily essentials delivered. You were changed into your pajamas yourself. The toiletries are in the bathroom. Remember to have breakfast. The keys are for the house. This is my home, and it also our home. When Tu Xiaoning arrived at the office, her colleagues informed her that old Zhang had been fired, and the vacancy for the expansion department manager was causing a stir. News of a potential new recruit being brought in had spread quickly. At lunch, Tu Xiaoning unexpectedly ran into Ji Yuhang. However, due to company regulations, they could only greet each other as ordinary colleagues.